I'm back. I want to talk to you today about cycling in an aquarium. So to get a better understanding, I'm going to give you guys a scenario. You ever go to a local fish store and you go to buy the fish, you bring it home, you're happy, you put it in the aquarium, and all of a sudden it drops dead. Or it goes on the bottom of the aquarium and it basically starts panting, it's skittish, it starts getting uh, schizophrenia, it just goes crazy, or it's laying on its side, heavy breathing, and maybe it doesn't pull through in a couple hours and it just dies. And that's where the old saying that fish don't live long comes from. Because people don't know how to properly house them. So we're going to talk about how to not do that. There's good and bad bacteria in your aquarium. We're not going to worry and scare you all about the bad bacteria. A lot of people watching that are more experienced haven't really even experienced any bad bacteria. I have and it's not fun, but it's workable. Sometimes not. But there's many different types of bacteria in our aquarium. There's aerobic and anaerobic. Meaning one breathes oxygen or needs aerobic conditions to survive and one does not need the presence of oxygen in order to survive. Both are beneficial in their own ways. When you have waste in your water column, meaning you feed that fish that fish poops it out, it takes no shit. But when you feed that fish and it takes a crap and that waste breaks down into the aquarium, it produces a byproduct called ammonia. That ammonia is very, very, very toxic to fish, even in the smallest quantities. There is an aerobic bacteria that takes that, consumes it, and reproduces from it, uses it as a food source. It breaks it down into a less toxic but still very toxic form of waste called nitrite. That is still very toxic to fish, but not as toxic as ammonia. That aerobic bacteria then takes the nitrites and breaks it down into a less toxic form called nitrates. Nitrates in small quantities is harmless to fish. Certain corals can even stand a small amount of nitrates, but I'm not recommending that. You want to keep it as low as possible. Keep it near zero as possible. So in the end, your aerobic bacteria breaks the toxins down into a almost non-toxic form called nitrates. But what about the anaerobic? Anaerobic bacteria is usually found in deep sand beds or in dirt beds. And the reason for that is because your substrate is so thick and dense the more you go down, the lower and lower the oxygen levels will be. Anaerobic bacteria is a double-edged sword though. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but I will say don't try to mimic conditions that can produce anaerobic bacteria. If you're new, you're going to run into problems and best not run into it while you're early on in the game. Nitrates can also be removed through other means. Either it be live plants, which I'm a huge fan of. I love having live plants either be macroalgae with salt water, which is going to be what's in this aquarium. This is actually just a little test. This is not going to stay there. But in freshwater, live plants are extremely popular. It's a great way of absorbing nutrients and waste while making your fish have a food source, hiding spots, places to reproduce their young, and have your aquarium look very pretty. The other way is through chemical media. I like being proactive and not reactive. Chemical media should be your last resort. You should always be keeping up with your tank husbandry so you don't have to rely on chemical media. There's different types of media out there on the market that either can be run in a reactor or in your filter or dosed in your aquariums. They're going to work on the ways they're intended on, but once again, these can help you out in a tight pinch. Like some people won't use phosphate reactors in their aquarium, but when they notice the spike, they'll turn the valve on or plug in the pump and it'll just remove the excess nutrients in, that's in the aquarium. So a lot of people are saying, how do I know when my tank is fully cycled? I don't know. Going back to an old saying that I like to bring up is no two systems are the same. You need to learn your system, not the hobby. I can set two octagon 15 gallon column tanks up with the same live rock, the same sand, the same equipment, the same inhabitants, and I can have different results. That's because your tanks are going to mature at their own rate. Really, you're at Mother Nature's mercy and you basically got to follow her along. She's going to take her course 
you need to learn what she's doing. That way you can do what's right for your fish. One thing I will tell you is you need to go out and get yourself a master test kit. When you get more experience, you kind of get a trained eye, but once again, you want to be proactive and reactive. No matter how much experience you have, you're only going to see the results of things that have happened because of things that you can't see with the naked eye. What I mean by that is, if you have a phosphate spike, it's going to take a while for cyanobacteria in salt water, or it's going to take a while for other bad things in fresh water to occur. But if you have a test kit and you're testing it on a regular basis, you can catch it before those bad consequences will occur. So once again, be proactive and not reactive. Getting a test kit is the only way you're really going to know when your cycle is complete. So in the end, you're going to need it. At least get a nitrate test kit. Once you see that you have nitrates in your aquarium at a low level, it's safe to start putting in fish. So now we're to the point where we need to figure out how to initiate a cycle. There's basically two different ways. It's either with fish or a fishless cycle. And it is exactly what it seems. A fish cycle is when you take hardy fish, meaning they can take an abuse. Uh, I'm not a fan of the fish cycle. Hardy fish are hardy because they're, they're called hardy because they can take a lot of abuse. They're pretty much hard to kill. Um, it's still possible to kill them and it's still wrong to be inhumane to them. It's not right to introduce any fish to an environment that's toxic. I don't stand for that and some people do. Damsels in salt water, hardy fish like tiger barbs in fresh water, not my cup of tea and I don't recommend it. But these fish basically do what I was talking about. You feed them little by little and they produce organic material that gets broken down and they create a cycle. But you can also do it without fish. There's many different methods with that too. You, some people go to the grocery store and they get organic ammonia and they dose it little by little into the aquarium. People use live rock, either it be semi-dried or alive. Uh, people in fresh water use dirt sometimes. There's many different ways. But I'm going to teach you a way that's applicable to fresh water and salt water. And what I like to do is pretend we got fish in this aquarium. We're going to feed the aquarium. We're not going to go to the buffet line and do all you can eat. We're going to go on brunch. <laughs> We're going to take frozen food, pellets, flake food, whatever it might be, and we're just going to feed these imaginary fish. It looks crazy. But going back to what we were talking about earlier, this food is going to break down. Once again, it doesn't matter what kind of food you put in there, it's still going to break down. It's going to go into the water column, it's going to produce ammonia, and it's going to go down that chain of event. Meaning, you're going to have a colonized bacteria load that can sustain fish. Now, when you obtain a cycle, you don't want to go crazy. You want to go slow and steady. I don't want to see any Lenny faces in the comments below. But slow and steady does win the race when it comes to aquariums. Patience is something you have to learn early on. Do not rush into things, especially in the aquariums. And you can take that as a life lesson too. But you can't expect to go get, I don't know, five gouramis and introduce them into an aquarium and expect your beneficial bacteria to catch up with that. You gotta slowly turn those gears. You know, you, you put one fish in there, you get in first gear. A week goes by, you get two more fish, you shift into second. Another week goes by, you shift into third gear and you get more fish. Another week goes by, maybe two weeks, you go into fourth gear and then you get the final fish you want and go into fifth gear and haul ass. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I hope that made sense, but you go little by little by little by little. You allow your system, this is a system, this is a little ecosystem, to slowly catch up with itself. You don't just go in neutral and drop it into fifth gear, you're going to blow it up. Same thing with your aquarium, you're going to blow it up. That's a really good analogy, I like that. So, slow and steady truly does win the race. We want to go little by little. Maybe you put your hardier fish in in the beginning, and then you move it up to a more delicate fish. For example, with fresh water, I'm going to put some quarry cats in there so they can graze off the bottom. I'm going to introduce some snails. Then I'm going to get some cardinal tetras and Bolivian rams. Then I'm going to finally put my discus in there. I'm not going to set up a new aquarium and put my discus or my Moorish idol in there. That's crazy. 
you have a very new ecosystem, why would you put something delicate in there? But enough venting. I'm gonna say this, you do not need chemicals to siphon an aquarium. They can help you out, they can speed it up, it can become beneficial. But there's a lot of people right now watching, raising their hands saying, no, you do not need chemicals to siphon an aquarium. So Dr. Tim, one and only, and uh, tanks, beneficial, bacteria starter, and all those on the market, they might be great. I don't know, you know, I never really use them. But, exactly, if I've never used them, how do I have uh, about 30 aquariums that are cycled? You don't need chemicals. Honestly, I believe that's an industry thing, just trying to make a dollar. And that brings me to my next topic. I love this series, it's one of my favorite things I've ever done on my channel. It's great for the beginners, that's what it's all about. You do not need to make things complicated. Half the people in our community do things without even thinking on why they do it. People get sumps on their aquarium not even knowing exactly what a sump does. People put this and that on their aquarium and they think it makes it glorified. You really gotta get behind the science. You don't have to make the science complicated. I hope that is what I accomplished in this video because it's great to know why. It's great if you're more experienced to know why and to find details. But if you're a newcomer and you wanna get into this and you've got a little bit of a passion that needs to be sparked, you don't need to be having an avalanche of information thrown in your face. And another thing is we get these cocky people in our community and that's anywhere you go and they believe they're better than anyone else and they'll belittle you because you're not on their level. Don't worry about that guys. There's going to be people that's going to be throwing you hate, especially for you new YouTubers if you're actually presenting your stuff on YouTube. But set, make your aquarium to the point where it satisfies you. Don't please others. Please yourself and most importantly please the fish. If you can make your fish happy and make yourself happy at the same time, at the end of the day it's your aquarium, you're going to be happy. So. In the end guys, buy a master test kit, cycle your aquarium without using fish, you don't need chemicals, and don't make it complicated. Other than that guys, I'll see you next week with a brand new video, feels good to be back. If you like the video, definitely hit that like button, leave your thoughts and comments in the section below. I know you guys got some great tips on cycling an aquarium, I want to hear them. Put the information in there so the community can grow. I'll see you next time, I've been Wayne with Plants Fish World, later. If you tamper with it and help increase or speed up or slow down certain things. <coughs> of course, that's a really good analogy. I like that. <laughs> I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody.